worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands all over this place. Forget about yourself. Forget about your problems. Let's magnify the King of Kings. Let's hail him as Lord and Lord. Hallelujah. All hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. He's a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The bright morning star. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah today. Shout hallelujah to the King today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He reigns supreme. He reigns forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, hail. Oh, hail, King Jesus. Oh, hail, oh, Emmanuel. hail Emmanuel. King of kings. King of kings. Lord of lords. Lord Come on, let's lift our voices and sing. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus. All hail King of Kings. King of Kings. Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. Lord More. And more I shall reign. I shall reign with him. Come on, let's do it one more time. Oh, hey, Lord. And throughout eternity, I'm going to and forever I shall reign with him. One more time, and throughout eternity. I'm going to praise Him And forevermore Forevermore I shall reign I shall reign with Him Hallelujah, hallelujah Thank you, Jesus let us lift up holy hallelujah. hands right now in the presence of the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. 
We know that our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to lift up holy hands. I'm going to lift up holy hands in the presence of the Lord. Lift up holy hands in the presence of the I'm going to lift up. I'm going to lift up. Holy hands. In the presence of In the presence of the Lord. I lift up. Holy hands. In the presence of the Lord.
Somebody lift up holy hands this morning. If you know your God is holy and wonderful and righteous and mighty. Hallelujah. Let's praise him today. Let's lift your hands all over this place and praise him. He is God alone. He alone must be praised. He alone must be worshipped. He alone must be glorified. We reserve our praises to him alone. Somebody ought to open your mouth right now and thank him for all he has done that he is a rewarder hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah we're singing you are god alone from before time began oh thank you jesus you are not a god you are not a god
Somebody worship this God. He changes not. He cannot be shaken. He cannot be stopped today. Do you know the God that you serve this morning? Nobody can stop him. Nobody can defeat him. He's undefeatable. He's unshakable. He's unstoppable. That's what he is. Just 
trust as I place my trust and confidence in you. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For him this morning, we're going to sing, Blessed Jesus, hold my hands. If ever a time we need him to hold our hands, it's now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I travel, as I travel through this pilgrim, there is a friend who walks with me, leads me safely, leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the right of Calvary. This will be, will be my friend. Oh, oh. 
Amen. Are we here with a vision for the service this morning? Amen. Were you here last week, Sunday? Are you here with a vision for your life? Amen. Were you here the Thursday before? Get out of the Bar. We've been getting some messages, don't it? And I tell you, the Bible speaks about seasons or times of refreshing. You know the presence of the Lord is in the house this morning? <laughs> oh, thank God. Sometimes we are in a position. We are in Lodabar. And we want to find something inside. David said, the encourage himself in the Lord. Amen. There is a way in which we come into the presence of the Lord. And to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's not saying how you feel, you know. That's saying how you do it. So I'm going to ask us to enter into his gates now with some more thanksgiving and praise. I know some of you have been praising and worshiping God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all wave our hands and then clap them onto him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your word. Thank you for one more day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I bless your name. I magnify your name. I lift you up. Oh, thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice in it. Thank you for your presence in your house today thank you we know that you are with us this day oh and you deserve the glory and the praise oh i bless the lord i will bless the lord at all times this praise shall continually be in my mouth hallelujah 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 oh thank you lord amen amen and I'm going to ask us, you know we've been standing, but I'm going to ask us to form ourselves into four groups of four. And we're going to pray. We're going to unite and we're going to pray. Amen. Um, sorry, one thing I'm going to distribute, we have some, I'm not going to read them out, there are too many. I'm just going to ask us to... Distribute. And we're going to pray this morning for each other. We're going to ask the Lord to cleanse us, forgive us. Where our attitudes are wrong, ask us to wash us to change us there are persons here who are sick there are persons here who are discouraged and there are persons who need to be delivered and so there is power the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and so we are going to unite this morning and pull down some strongholds in Jesus name in Jesus name let us all call upon the Lord. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I know the Lord will see me through. I know He'll see me through. Oh, the life is so high, and the light refuses to shine. He will hear me well. concerns us. Amen. He that hath begun a good work in us will complete it. Amen. Amen. Greet each other before you take your seat. you have sat, just reach for your Bible in the house of God, you get exercised too. Amen? So we're going to stand for the reading. But now that you have gotten your seat, just get your Bible and let's stand and we're going to read the scripture. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord is taken from Psalms 136 and we'll read alternately. When you have found it, just say amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought Israel from among them. For his mercy endureth forever. forever. 
to him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endured forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endured forever. To him with smart great kings, for his mercy endured forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endured forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endured forever. Who remembered us in our low estate for his mercy endured forever. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endured forever. Twenty-six. Let's us all say this together. Who oh, give thanks unto the God of heavens for His mercy? Thank you, Chief. Let us clap our hands unto the Lord for His mercy. Endure it forever. Let us give thanks unto the God of all gods for his mercy. Endure it forever. Hallelujah. And he's our God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Ah, thank you, Jesus. We are blessed to be in his presence this morning to give him thanks and to let him know how much we appreciate him for his goodness and his mercies. Praise God. And this morning is such a delight to welcome all those who are visiting with us this morning. Will you just stand for a moment so we can recognize you? All those who are visiting with us this morning, bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. On behalf of our First Lady, Alicia Bartlett, our ministers, and all the saints of Pentecostal Tabernacle, we want to welcome you this morning to the presence of the Lord Jesus. He has a banqueting table ready for you to feast. And we pray today that you will open your hearts and let him in as he knocks. We just want to ask you to listen to the schedule of announcements for this week. This evening at 6.30 p.m., there is evening service in the sanctuary, and you cannot afford to miss it. Also at 6.30, there is the final citywide crusade in Junction St. Elizabeth. And for all those who can go, we encourage you to go and support. But if, again, as I said, if you're not going to Junction, please be in the house of the Lord this evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. Tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m., two great sessions. There are men's and women's fellowship general meeting. These are the last two meetings of our men's and women's fellowship departments or ministries for this year we won't have another one for 2012 so ladies i'm plugging for the ladies today please make sure you come out tomorrow evening and just just feast at the table of the lord our women's fellowship are going to be ministering to us and we want for you to be there we know you have busy schedules but take time out for the lord this one last time and our men have seen some flyers going out you're invited to be here tomorrow evening at 6 30 p.m on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., there's going to be youth service. All our young people and not so young people, you're also invited to come out. On Wednesday morning, we start off at 6.30 a.m. with morning manna. 
at 9 a.m. Pentab High School Student Service, 11.45 a.m. Fasting Service, at 3 p.m. Student Service, and at 6.30 p.m. Prayer and Bible Study. On Thursday, December 6th at 10 a.m., National Ministerial Meeting at the campsite in Monique. This is for all our ministers I gather. 6 p.m., ACA Graduation, Apostolic Counselors Association. This will be their graduation for 2012. Members are encouraged to attend and support our gradies, graduates. On Saturday at 9 a.m., Women in Ministry Conference 2012 for female pastors, ministers, wives of pastors and ministers at the campsite in Manig. Registration costs $1,000 and this includes lunch and information package. At 11 a.m. on Saturday also, the funeral service for Sister Celida Morris will be held here at Pentab. On Sunday morning, Lord's willing, we come back here at, we start off the morning at 6 a.m. with Rightly Dividing the Word on RJR Fame FM. At 7 a.m. prayer time in the sanctuary. At 8 a.m. pre-session. And at 8.30 a.m. Sunday school. 10.15 a.m. worship service, children's church, and teen tab. And a great evening service in the sanctuary starting at 6.30 p.m. Some general announcements. Photographs of persons who graduated, got married, or had new babies in 2012 to be included in the 2012 annual report should be submitted to Sister Yvonne Stewart or Ermin McFarlane by today, Sunday, December 2nd. Teens Banquet 2012 will be held on Friday, December 21st in the Ralph and Helen Reynolds Hall. Cost $2,000. Deadline for payment today, December 2nd, to Sister Stacy Russell and Tanisha Hart. The Lord richly bless you. Have a great day just worshiping him. Praise God. I praise the Lord, everybody. At this time, we're going to be um, offering our praise in terms of and worship in terms of giving. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. We're going to be receiving an offering. And Sister Tamika Porter is going to come and lead us. Let's all bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for one more day. This is the day that you have made, and we want to thank you. Thank you for the privilege we can come into your house. Thank you for giving us jobs. And even if we do not have jobs, there are some means of sustenance that you have provided. And so we want to thank you and give back. From our hearts, our worship, and from our wallets, what you have prospered us with. Accept it, we pray, and use it to your glory in your precious name. In Jesus' name. Come, Sister Porter. Um, just being uh, reminded about that special offering that Pastor had mentioned. I'm just going to ask you to also remember to give that special. Anybody remember? Okay. Amen. Bless it. Bless it. Oh, when I get there, when I get there, I will sing and shout. Hallelujah, praise 
Amen. Amen. We shall see him as he is. We shall look upon his face. And we shall sing amazing grace. We shall thank him. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. At this time, we're going to be entering into a period of sharing. If you were here last week, Sunday night, and listened to the testimony of Brother Wilson, it was a blessing. Amen. It was interspersed with humor. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Amen. It's good to hear from the people of God. And this time we're going to be hearing from a number of persons. Come, Sister Tashai. Praise the Lord, everyone. A young girl who loves to dance. Back then... I used to drink Appleton and Pepsi, Baileys. Every Christmas, my father keeps a dance, and I would serve in the bar until, you know, I just started praying, and I said, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to live for you, but I just don't know how. And I would pray and I would pray until, you know, I received a phone call, Barrington James, and he came and he witnessed to me and invited me to church, gave my life to the Lord, baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And my father said, so, my red girl, oh, who are going to be at the bar now? Said, Daddy, I belong to a different party now not going back there and some of my friends said to you i giving you two months because they love the party too much and i said all right let us watch what the lord will do 11 years now and i'm so thankful to god for saving my soul i have failed him so many times but he always embraces me and remind me that he loves me and he cares. I remember praying and I said, God, you have to circle me with persons who mean well with you and want to live for you. And I remember Barrington, when I moved to Padmore Drive, still living there, he says, Tashai, I know a deacon that lives in this area. I'm going to hand you over to him. And one night I came to church and he introduced me to Brother Frey. Brother Frey have home Bible studies. He would come for me, take me to home Bible study. Any function that he's going, he invited me. Every birthday, I receive a card. I might get money. I might get a present or a cake. And brethren, my father, biological father, don't even do that. Sometimes I have to call and I said, Daddy, today is my birthday. And he would say, Well, you know me, I get old, you know. But Brother Frey, you know, did a lot for me and Sister Frey. Then I met Sister Angelita and so many others just going to the home Bible study and just sharing, you know, would go to maybe Pegasus sometimes, have a little function and we pray. And it was just so good being the presence of the people of God. And then I remember praying and asking the Lord what it is that you want me to do in your house. And I prayed like the Sunday, the following Sunday, Sister Mill would approach me. And she says, you know, Sister Corey, I'm inviting you to a meeting. 
And I said, what kind of meeting is that? And she said, just come and sit in and listen. And it was a missions meeting. And ever since I've been apart. So the Lord really just circled me with persons. And him just set up everything. You know, he's a very strategic God. And I just thank God there are many times when sometimes I feel like giving up. But I said, God, you're not giving up on me. So how am I going to give up on you? I don't have any other reason to live but to live for Jesus. There is no other meaning to my life. You know, I said, God, let your will be done in my life. So I thank God for his grace. Grace, it is love. It is kindness. It is compassion. It is long suffering. Because, you know, so you make a mistake, you know, you, you make your mistake and you pray and you fast. And he just gives you the time just to reconcile and to make it right. And so, you know, he gives you the reasons why you shouldn't do this or so. It, it's a learning process. So I really thank God for his grace this morning. And I just want to encourage us all keep on living for God, don't give up on God. He will never, ever give up on you. And for some of us, we are at that place of decision. God will never forsake you. You can depend on Jesus. Even when you don't remember him, you can depend on him. Sometimes he just places somebody just to give you a phone call. Tashai, remember that Jesus loves you. The other day I was at work and I was so low. And Auntie Paulette, She's not my mother. I call her my mama, you know, very stern and, you know. And she called me and she said, Pumpkin, I just want to remind you that God loves you and he cares for you. And whatever it is that you're going through, he knows you are going through it and he is with you. And I was at the counter at my workplace. I just started crying and I said, God, I thank you for remembering me and just allowing somebody just to call me and to minister to me. So I just want to thank him for his love and his grace and his mercy this morning I'm looking forward to be with him that sweet and very wonderful day I just want to encourage us to stay in the house of God no matter what it is just keep staying in the house of God he loves you and he cares and he will never leave you God bless you let's lift our hands and worship the Lord Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank him for his grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I remember at age 12, I was living with my great-grand-aunt in the country. And she said to me, Little boy, Sunday of baptism, you're going to get baptized. So I remember the Saturday night, I went to the Crown and Anchor board and I enjoyed myself there. And I went to the little zinc lawn and I danced how I knew how then. Because I know it's tomorrow morning, I'm going to have to stop all of that. So I went and in obedience, I got baptized. Yes, but it wasn't in the name of Jesus. But I didn't know the difference then. My mom who was living in town, yes, heard and she came to country. Because she thought that now I grew big enough and I can hear the word and I can understand uh, the word of God. So she came and she preached unto me the gospel according to the book of Acts. You know that I should be baptized in the name of Jesus. I heard about the Jesus only people. So at the time I never appear in the mind. But she left some tracks and went back to Kingston. Over a period of time they were there and I started reading them. And I got convicted. I don't know when, I don't know how. But I, it drew me to read the book of Acts and the book of John. And I understood the gospel perfectly. But I did not want to disappoint my great-grand-aunt who brought me up, yes, uh, in the church. So I remember one day I was in third form. And I don't know what happened. I just said to one of my friends, Dino. Follow me go down Amarant Bay. It was lunchtime. And we just run go down the gully. And we left school. Christ Chapel was always open. And I went there 
Sister Juliet was there to sing a song. And I got baptized in Jesus' name. And I went right back to school. And um, I went home and I said, oh, I'm going to do this now. I can't tell mama. So I call my mother and I tell her, I tell her, don't tell nobody. So I got baptized in Jesus' name. And that's all I wanted from her church, you know. And so I lived, I think, two years passed on until my siblings, my brother and sister came home one night and said, guess what? I said, what? I feel. I said, what that? And they told me it's the Holy Ghost coming on the inside. And I said, all right, fine. And then... For some reason, when they were leaving to the Ten Crusade, uh, the next night I went along. I dressed in my jeans. I'm in Nike. Yes. And I found a shirt and I put it on and I went. And I noticed that these people, every minute them say, let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. But my hands just went like this. But I found out that every night I went, the hands just keep going up and going up and going up. And I found myself one night looking for a tie to wear because all the young men had on their tie. And I'm saying, okay, fine. And I remember, you know, on the seventh night, I danced and I danced and I danced. And they wrote me up after some time and said, you know, you're feeling up. I said, okay. I never know what happened. Maybe I worshiped so much that I lost myself. And they told me that they heard me speaking in tongues, you know, and I worship God and everything. And... I still wasn't into the, the oneness doctrine or anything. I just know that I want to be baptized in Jesus' name just like the apostles. And I wanted to receive the Holy Ghost because they had it too. But that was it. And then all of a sudden now I realized that uh, I started uh, sneaking out of the house to go to the Pentecostal church on a Sunday night and on a Wednesday night and every night that they have it. So I one time the pastor, my mom told the pastor, of course, that I was baptized. And he referred to me one night as Nicodemus coming to Jesus by night. You know? I didn't really understand. But and, and by this time now, the, the, the folks from my first church uh, heard about me, you know, going to another church. And so I started hiding from them. And I realized I want to go on a Sunday morning as well. So uh, my former church was up the road and the UPC was down the road. So when they were walking up, I always look in front of me to see if I see sister whoever she was coming up and uh, run going on one lane and wait until she passed. And I kept on doing that until I just give up. And, you know, thanks be to God, you know, I just, I just, I, if them want to hear them here. And now, you know, I'm just uh, in, in a different church. But it's not about the church. It's about the worship. It's about uh, doing what God wants to do. And, you know, I can just say that it's the grace of God. I didn't know what I was searching for. I didn't know what I needed. But God knew what I needed. And he just made a way. And if you're here today and you're searching. Or if you're not searching. But God wants to reach out to you. And God have a plan for your life. And I encourage you today just to surrender your life to him. And allow him to have his way. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. No, it's really by the grace of God we are saved. <laughs> Only by the grace of God. Testimony some of us have. By the grace of God I am saved. By the grace of God, I am saved. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. And sometimes when you're in the 
It's in the midnight. And the Lord, you feel the Lord just tugging at your heart to do something. And you, there is a desire for you to do something else. But the Lord's voice is so much sweeter. And you know, when you leave, when you just yield to Him, and when you look back, you say, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I stand. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. everybody I was asked to testify but with permission I'm going to read an excerpt um, that ministered to me from streams in the desert it says the battle is the Lord's how prone we are to lose sight of this and to imagine because we see only our little corner in the conflict that the battle is ours if the battle is the Lord's then the responsibilities for planning belong to him Everything connected with the line of attack, the method of defense, must, be, must belong to him. We need not be anxious as to the enemy's subtle activity or power. As captain of the host of the Lord, am, am I now come? He has a full view of the enemy's movements and perfect knowledge of the enemy's devices. He has anticipated all the enemy's wiles. It is impossible for him to be deceived or to be taken by surprise. It is his glory that is at stake. The honor of his name that is being assailed. He is able to withstand the mightiest foe. If the battle is the Lord's, the supplies will be all sufficient. No one knows how much is wanted in the day of battle like that general who has been through many campaigns. We shall lack nothing to make us victorious warriors. The victory is certain. The captain on whose side we are has never known defeat. He goes forth conquering and to conquer. The enemy may apparently gain temporary advantage at different points of the battle, but victory over Satan, victory over Christ by Satan is simple, impossible. But he expects us to rest in his wisdom. In the thick of the fight, in the midst of the smoke and din of battle, we may fail to see the wisdom of all God's ways. When we cannot see it, it is then that we must rest in his wisdom. Let us have confidence in his power and be obedient to his command. I will not fear the battle if thou art by my side. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to share my experience with you. Last year, started out last year, October, the devil launched an all-out attack. First, he wanted, he started on my family. He wanted my marriage. What seemingly to me 
seems to be a miscommunication. The devil gets underneath it and he magnified it because he had intention. But today I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for some people who prayed. And I want to thank him also for dreams. I too had dreams like Joseph. Myself and my husband, we had dreams in the same night. I dreamt that I was being led to Sister Bartlett. And he dreamt that he was building a model house. And when I woke up the morning, I embraced my dream. I ran to the woman of God. And she ministered to us. And I really want to give God thanks today. And I am saying all of this to say that there are people here that they are having problems, but they are afraid to share. When you are going through your problem, don't sit down there by yourself. There must be somebody that can pray for you, that will be able to encourage you. There is help in the house. When that did not work out, the devil didn't give up. He started out on our livelihood. For a living, we do boilers and layers. So he started, we got a hundred chicken and we put in the coop. The morning when we woke up, 87 died. 13 was alive. We said, okay, we are not giving up. We went back, we got another hundred. The following morning, 50 died. Two days after, <laughs> two days after something went into the coop, and killed 30 of them. We got only 20. We said, okay, we're still not giving up. So we decided again to go. And we got some more. When my husband went to get the chicken the day, <laughs> he was coming up and he went into Phil's hardware to get a sheet of zinc. And when he got back into the vehicle, he saw 59 chickens lying lifeless. So... <laughs> He, he, I called him at the same time and he was telling me what was happening. So when he got home, he said, boy, Nora, this is not a good day. I said, this is a good day. It is the day that the Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice irrespective of what is happening. And brothers and sisters, I was supposed to come into Kingston the evening. And when I drove out and reached on top of the hill, the vehicle broke down. It was neither going forward nor backward. So we said, okay. We pulled it back into the yard. And I remember I called my brother-in-law and I was relating to him all that we were going through. And he said, Nora, tell the devil you are not impressed. You hear what I say? I said, devil, I am not impressed. <laughs> Praise God. And you know, I went home the day and I said, Lord... There must be something you have to say to me. Tell me. Because I am, we are trying. And everything we do seems to be going wrong. So talk to me, Lord. Talk to me. Tell me what it is that you want to say to me. And I hope in the word of God and I got scripture. However, the devil didn't give up, you know. He doesn't give up. Because while that was happening and the vehicle was breaking down, then the devil decides, okay then. I am going to touch her health. I went to the doctor. I had a condition. And I went to the doctor. And the doctors said I had to go and do some tests. The test cost over $20,000. And I didn't see the first cent. It was during the time in March when we had um, fasting and prayer. And I remember one Saturday morning I was driving down to work and I started to laugh. And I pick up the phone and I call Sister Millwood. And I say, Millie girl, I, the doctor said I am sick. And I need to do some tests and I don't even have a red cent. So when you pray today, just tell your father and my father. The kekla on a thousand hill belongs to him. Tell him to sell some animals and send the money come. <laughs> However, when I got to, she laughed and she said, Nora, him don't even have to sell a whole heap. One big elephant at that seat. <laughs> so I laughed and I went to work and I was in the office and somebody told me that somebody was downstairs to see me. So when I went down, I saw a young man from overseas. I was 
assisting their father with his paper. They were filing for him and I assisted him. So he came down and he came to see me. And we were there talking. And I saw him went into his pocket, pull out his billfold, and give me a hundred US. So I started to laugh. I said, God, you're not easy, you know. You're not even change it. You give me in US. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, that was something that helped me to do the test. The doctor said that it was urgent, so I had to do it quickly. When I went to do the test the morning, when I came back out into the vehicle, I sat down in the vehicle with the letter in my hands. I didn't know what was in it. And something said I should call Sister Russell because Pastor Bartlett was not here. So I took the phone and I called Sister Russell and she answered. She said, Nora, you know that I am in a meeting and normally I don't answer my phone. But something just tell me to answer my phone. So I told her what was happening and she, I wanted to come down and see her. She said, you can come. When you come to the front desk, just tell them to send you up because I give permission. So I went up and I relayed to her what was happening. And herself and Brother Michael, they anointed me with oil and they prayed over the letter. And I went back to the doctor. And when she hoping, well, Sister Russell took the liberty. I told her, give her permission. So she told me what was there, that I had to go and do a biopsy. Now then, I went back to the doctor and she told me the same thing. And I didn't have any more money. But I know the God that I serve, that he was a provider because he had started providing for me. When I, but between that time, now waiting to get the money, the devil had a field day. He told me that I was going to die. So when I went to the word of God not to seek a little solace, when I opened the Bible, it opened to Job chapter 8. Man that is born of a woman is full of trouble and a few days. Brothers and sisters, I closed the Bible and I said, God, you mean that I'm going to die? However... I used that scripture on a daily basis. I went into the word and I realized that the, but there's a part of the scripture that says that he has set a boundary. And I say, okay, God, you set a boundary. It can be so much and no more. And I waited on the Lord and I got the money. And I remember the day before I was supposed to do the biopsy. I came down and I spoke to Pastor Bartlett and he prayed for me. And he said in his prayer, you shall not die. You shall live and declare the works of the Lord. And today I am declaring that God is good. I did the biopsy and the test was okay. And I am giving the Lord thanks. I am thankful today for his grace, his mercy. He has been good. Hallelujah. He is a provider. He is a keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if there is no other friend... That you need to have. But this man Jesus. I recommend him to you today. Stay with him. God bless you.
Let's all stand. Let's all stand this afternoon. Amen. We are low the Lord. If we are low the Lord, He will beat the devil out of our finances. He will beat the devil out of our sickness. He will beat the devil out of our situation. God is more than able. Whatever dreams are there that God has given us, He wants to bring them to pass. He's more than willing, He's more than able. Amen, amen. At this time, I'm going to introduce our speaker for the moment. Brother Clive Forbes is coming to share with us. Amen. Continue to worship. Amen. Continue to focus. Praise the Lord, everybody. We worship the Lord. Hallelujah. More than enough. He's more than enough. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There is enough reason for me to celebrate today. There is enough reason for me to be excited about God. He's more than enough. More than enough. All sufficient God is. Hallelujah. He never ceases to be God. He reigns supreme. The King eternal, immortal, invisible. The only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 We declare your glory, God. Among the people. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. We extol you. We extol you. We extol you. Hallelujah. 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 What a God. What a God we serve. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, this morning I believe that the Lord in His divine wisdom moved in this place. It seemed like everything that was been done was so coordinated by the move of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, grace, what a God. What a God, what a God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody need to tell the, the, the enemy today that God is faithful, hallelujah. Somebody needs to let the enemy know that God is faithful. Hallelujah. He's a sufficient God. His grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God, I believe. Deep in my spirit, God wants to do a mighty work in our lives. I believe that God, every time we come here, God wants to minister and to touch. But even in this atmosphere, miracles can happen. And there are many people in the building here who have had many testimony about the goodness of God. Do we have a witness among us? Hallelujah. 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 We won't be very long. I know it's close to midday. If you have a Bible, it's going to turn me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're talking about celebrating God's grace. Celebrating God's grace. Hallelujah. You know, two weeks ago, I was at the, the National Stadium, you know. I was representing my friend Andrew, you know. Football match. You know, my alma mater was playing, and of course, 
it was all excitement as we won the match and big men, men in high esteem, low, low esteem, all get excited about the football match. So today I'm challenging all of us to get excited about grace. <laughs> so I have no apologies if you see me get excited because I'm not going to shout for St. George's College and don't shout for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 7 to 10. Let's read together after 2. The King's James Version. 1, 2. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a torn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Ah, do we have some testimony here? You know, I looked over and I saw Sister Gibbon in the house. And I remember the many testimony in the story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I see many people here in the house with the testimony. I've most rather glory in my infirmities. Ah. <laughs> oh, mighty God. 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 Hallelujah. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, ah, I see some sick folk here, but, but there's a master surgeon in the house. Hallelujah! When I'm weak, then I'm as strong. <laughs> hallelujah! 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 Move, there's a move of God who wants to straighten us today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let me let I read in your hearing today the amplified version, verses 9 and 10. If you have it and you can put it on the screen, that's fine. But the amplified version, he said, But he said to me, My grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and complete and show themselves most effective in your witness. Therefore, I will, all, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and my infirmities that the strength and power of Christ, the Messiah, may rest May pitch his tent over and dwell upon me. God wants to pitch his tent over us today. So for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities, insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, and distresses. For when I am weak in human strength, then am I truly strong, able, powerful, in divine strength. Can we worship the Lord, everybody? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We celebrate grace today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, you may be seated for a brief mind. We won't be very long. Choir, you're going to be helping me preach it today. All right, so get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But God loves us. He loves us with an infinite love. And in the house where we hurt and we pain, the, the eternal God wants to minister to each and every one of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But it's important for us before we can celebrate grace, we understand what the true meaning of grace is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The word that was translated grace in verse 9 was a Greek word spelled C-A-R-I-S, charis, which really means a favor done without expectation of return 
unearned or unmerited favor. It speaks to absolute freeness of the loving kindness of God to men. Finding its only motive in the bounty and free heartedness of the giver. So yes, he is more than enough. <laughs> he is more than enough. He loves us with an infinite love. So when you and I go through our trials and our tribulation, which was allowed by the sovereign God, understand this, that it is inch upon the foundation and the infinite love of God, and you will come through all right. You need to understand that God loves you more than you love yourself. God loves you more than your mother loves you, your father, your brother, your sister. Nobody loves you like Jesus. Hallelujah. And in the midnight hour when there's no one around to even call you, to speak to you. But standing somewhere in the shadow, you can find Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is there to minister to your need. He loves you out of a bounty of his goodness, his very nature, his character. That's who it is. That's what grace speaks to. He's ever consistent. Ever consistent. We change. We fluctuate. But God's love is consistently true. God's love is consistently true. Oh, what a God. What a God. What a God. Oh, what a God. So we can be excited about his grace today. Grace came to meet me, to lead me back home. Grace covers me. Grace embraces me. Grace upholds me. God's grace is awesome and powerful. And in verse 9, the phrase that was translated meant perfect came from a word which really speaks to being complete all in the sense of God fulfilling his goal in you and I. So what God is saying, listen, when I carry you through these trials, I'm working a work in you so you can accomplish my divine goal of your life. God loves you. He has a plan. He has a plan for you and I. Goal is tried in the fire. Goal is purified in the fire. And except a, what, a grain of wheat fall into the ground and what? Die, it bringeth forth no fruit. So there's a debt that has to take place. A debt to self. God has to strip us of ourselves to purify us so that his character can be formed in us. So today our posture must change in our crisis. We should look at it and embrace it and say, Lord, do your thing in me, Lord. Do your thing in me, Lord. So yes, Sister Norma, you could speak that. Devil, I'm not impressed. Because God was working a work in you. Devil, I am not impressed. Because Jesus loves me. Devil, I am not impressed. God is going to see me through. Devil, I am not impressed. Because victory is guaranteed. I know the outcome. I have got to be patient and walk with God. And that's the message today. God wants us to understand that his grace is sufficient for us. So why should we celebrate grace today? Ah, why should we celebrate grace today? And I want to give us three reasons. There may be more, but why should we celebrate grace today? Hallelujah, why? Reason number one. We should celebrate grace because it is sufficient. It's adequate. It is adequate for every situation. When there's no food on the table, it is adequate. When the marriage is going through turmoil, it is adequate. When there is no finances, it is adequate. When I've got to pay my mortgage or my rent and I can't see, it is adequate. Hallelujah. It is adequate when I'm sick in body. It is adequate. It is adequate. It is adequate. God's grace is sufficient for me. It is adequate and sufficient. It speaks to the fact that he will never abandon us. <laughs> oh my God. I heard on the news a lady, some mother in Mandeville, some fetus was left. But I am so glad we have a father. Hallelujah. When we are going through the pressures of time, when we are crushed in the crucible of time, there is a God who we serve, who knows and loves us. And he said, my son, I'm with you. My grace is sufficient for you. I love you too much. It's out of my loving kindness and the bounty of my heart. I'm going to surround you and embrace you. You are going to come true victorious in Jesus' name. And sometimes in the crowd, in the trials and in our crisis, the enemy comes to buffet us and to hinder us. But we can celebrate grace because it's adequate. So we can sing, I almost let go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. But for God's grace. Hallelujah. But for God's grace. Hallelujah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody need to hold up. Hallelujah. Depression got me down. Oh, what a God. God oh, and you feel him holding you today. So oh, hold me, Jesus. Hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. God's mercy helps me. So I wouldn't let go. no matter how intense our trials or crisis the loving kindness of God will sustain us to accomplish his desired goal in our lives our trials and our crisis was designed to make us better persons that's the poor reason so look at the crisis you know in business they say in business never waste a crisis but why is it that the church doesn't embrace it? Understand that the crisis is not something bad. Oh God, give us a revelation today. Give us a transformation today. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, enjoy the crisis. God is doing a work in you. God is transforming you and putting his character into you. Oh, he's stripping us of ourselves so we can be Jesus manifested in the flesh. Oh God, help us to understand that. So our crisis is there to make us better persons. And he loves us, he will not break us. 
so we can sing. He will never put more on me than I can do. Thank you, Jesus. coming to a close the apostle Paul understood the full dimension of God's grace he understood it was more than just about initial salvation but it also kept him safe he understood that God's loving kindness his favor was so potential and good and awesome so that's why in verse 10 he said for, for the sake of Christ the amplified version I am well pleased and take pleasure in my suffering because he's working and working me oh hallelujah and I know in this building there are those who have been struggling for a year and for the year 2012 it has been awesome pressure and you wonder where is God 
and everywhere you turn it seemed like you came up on a wall but understand God was trying to do a work in you hallelujah everything that didn't work out sister normal when you were speaking I said God what a God you knew nothing what I had in my spirit but I said God oh he was working at work ah you you're questioning God why all the problems why all the struggle but my God I've been trying to work a work in you all of this year and he wants you to end 2012 knowing that he has been working a work in you to bring you to a new place and a new dimension in him ah I believe God wants to give some persons a victory right here today right now hallelujah hallelujah I know we have cheers here but I want to challenge you to come if you feel a pull of God on your spirit come we're going to finish they're just going to help me sing one more song when we finish but oh it has been rough <laughs> I didn't understand everything but grace sufficiency of God's grace I didn't understand why Lord why me why my family but he was working a work in me <laughs> hallelujah so like Paul we yes we can we've had experiences where we have been buffeted we had a torn in the flesh and we wanted it to go but God said no you need it 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 you need this crisis to do a great work hallelujah so help me sing my brother ah to move your mountain today hallelujah he wants to give you healing in the valley somebody needs to be hidden from the rain hallelujah ah. oh healing rain healing rain healing rain oh somebody needs strength this morning god is here god is here god is here he is raining on God. Ah, the unsaved, saved. You can come. You come right now. Experience the grace of God. Hallelujah. Experience God's grace.
I just like to encourage if you're sitting that you would participate in the service. Um, there are many persons in the altar. Just a while ago, we, have, we are on a mission. We have a vision and we are on a mission. I'm going to encourage all, all of us worship, pray. Brother Walters, I understand, was went to the hospital not too long ago that's the information i have so i'm going to ask us to as we continue to worship to pray and ask the lord to intervene whatever the situation ask him to intervene amen there are persons who are seeking the lord in the audience help us let us be focused amen amen let's all worship amen Open the floodgates of heaven, ready to rain, ready to rain. Open the floodgates of heaven, ready to rain. 
Let's just focus on the Lord. Let's just focus on what's happening here. Let's just focus. Spend some time thanking the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Whatever my situation, you're able, Lord. You're able to take me through. Your grace is sufficient. You're able to lead me into my place. Maybe I'm not in my place. Oh Lord, you know where I am now. But you're here. You've been waiting in there all the time. Oh Jesus. So I want my heart to you this morning, this afternoon. Lead me to your place, Lord. Oh God. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Came to me, me to lead me, back lead me to the place where I belong. Lead me to the place where I belong. I am not in my position.
it reaches to the
strong upon the glassy sea. We meet all at once. We'll meet all at once and crown Christ forever. This is what, this is what.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Just to remind us that um, there we meet back here this afternoon for our evening service. Invite somebody to come. Remember to pray for Brother Walters. Amen. Amen. God bless you.